Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. This is The Pulse. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Pat Kelleher. And I'm Mackenzie Carboni. This is The Pulse. Back in March of last year, universities across the country had to adapt to a different idea of campus life due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nearly a year later, President Patillo announces that Sacred Heart University will become a vaccination site in the upcoming months. Here's Shannon Savinsky with the story. It may be a new semester, but schools are still working to find ways to get a handle on college life during a global pandemic, and Sacred Heart University is no different. For all students, particularly those living on campus, it's been a brutal experience, and we're trying to to do what we can. The fall semester was a learning curve for this administration as they tried to figure out the best way possible to keep students on campus for the duration of the semester. I think the biggest thing we learned as the semester went on in the uh, fall was the amount of testing that we needed to do. So when we started in the beginning of the semester, we were testing about 300 students a week, which is what the state was requiring us to do, five to 10% of our resident population. So that was 10%. We then went up to 450. I think by mid-semester we were doing about 1,000, and by the end of the semester we were doing about 2,500. Taking everything they learned from last semester, the Sacred Heart Administration implemented new protocols to ensure the health and safety of everyone on campus. This includes testing every full-time undergraduate student on a weekly basis where you receive a colored wristband for the week. And that's just kind of to signify that you got your test. And it's kind of supposed to be like if you are having in-person classes that professors are supposed to kind of look and see if you have your bracelet. Um, and if you like aren't up to date or scheduled for that one, you unfortunately aren't really like allowed on campus then. With the combination of stricter testing regulations and an even stronger emphasis of the pioneer promise, Dr. Patillo is hopeful about the future of this academic year. I think it's all positive if we all adhere to it. And it is, I understand, I really do, how trying it is. But um, this is really something that we all have to stay behind and support one another. But what kind of impact will the vaccine have on this semester? The West Campus, the new connector building, is going to be a vaccination site. Um, and St. V's will be in there. Uh, and it'll be for the residents of Bridgeport and Fairfield. Frankly, I'm hoping that we get some benefit for our community. The Sacred Heart community is working together every day to make the rest of the year as normal as possible. But the major thing that is presenting to be a challenge is graduation. This year, seniors, we're, we're still, we haven't finalized any commencement plans yet. I know some schools are starting to do that. Um, I was actually just on a call with a bunch of my colleagues from around the state and we're all kind of back and forth on what we're going to do, but hopefully we'll be able to have some type of ceremony for them. That's a little bit better than the virtual one we had last year. But, you know, every day, I think new information is coming out that maybe gives us more hope. As for now, it will take every person in order to make this semester more successful than the last. If we can just look at it incrementally, if we can get through the next couple of weeks, then the next couple of weeks after that, not not think long-term, but get through the short-term incremental periods. Um, and hopefully we'll come out, uh, you know, come out of it on the other side. For The Pulse, I'm Shannon Savinsky, Fairfield, Connecticut. The coronavirus continues to affect students of all years and majors. However, there is one major that is exposed to the virus a bit more than others. Nursing students are hands-on in the hospitals, not to mention giving out COVID vaccines as well. Kara Julo gives us an inside look at a day in the life of SHU nursing students. Mary Latarulo and Danielle Millen are seniors facing the realities of being a student nurse during a pandemic. To ensure the best safety for them and their patients, they have had to make some adjustments this year with classes and clinicals. So at clinical, we have a preceptorship this semester or you're in a clinical group. So you can either be placed with a nurse where you follow their shift and learn one-on-one -on -one from them. You get to take care of all the patients and their assignment and learn from them. Or you can be placed in a clinical group, which is where you're with a group of your peers. And you, with the help of your clinical instructor, you can work on improving your skills and improving your patient care. I know for us, our exams had changed from being in person to being online. So that was a big adaption. 
And also we've had to do some different clinical experiences online, which was also a different type of learning experience. But I think that with the help of our professors and the staff, we've been able to adapt well where we can still learn all the skills. I feel like it was also a change like in the hospital because we were so used to just like being able to go into every patient's room and not have to worry about putting on proper PPE to go in. The nursing students were some of the first in Connecticut to give out COVID vaccines to healthcare workers. The dean expects many of the 165 seniors in the program to continue distributing vaccines for the rest of the semester. Actually, both of us had the opportunity to give out COVID-19 vaccines, um, and I just think it just a huge representation of hope going forward for the future. I was actually able to give both of my grandparents the vaccine, which was really special. Um, because it's been a struggle for them that I have like all younger siblings and they haven't been able to go and see them just because of the worry. And I feel like that's for a lot of families. There's been a lot of um, missing out on seeing each other. Giving out COVID vaccines as a student nurse was a really rewarding experience. It was really amazing to just see how hopeful and excited everyone was coming to get the vaccine and how thankful they were that we were able to give them. Mm -hmm. And it was also a great experience just to be able to learn from the healthcare team about all the different components that go into administering a vaccine. Overall, it's been an extremely stressful four years, but I know it's gonna be a rewarding career in the future. So every day of stress was definitely worth it. <laughs> For The Pulse, this is Kara Gilo, Fairfield, Connecticut. Sacred Heart has had to alter many traditional activities involving student experiences due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This hits home for the class of 2021 as their entire senior year has been altered. President Patillo and other members of the SHU community spoke to us on their hopes for graduation and what they would like seniors to know moving forward into their last semester. Jackie O'Rourke has the story. Good luck, congratulations. If you were to ask a Sacred Heart alum what their favorite part of senior year was, 9 out of 10 would most likely say Reds or Senior Pub Nights. Unfortunately, the class of 2021 will not be able to say the same. It's definitely um, a little frustrating sometimes. It's not all necessarily our choice or even our advisor's choices. There's people even higher up. I got a lot of emails from people that I didn't even know knew I was on student gov um, asking when Reds was going to open. It's not up to us. And even Waylon, who's in of Reds in the like, student union, it's not even up to him at this point. Over the phone, Mike Moylan told me, if it were up to me and up to the school, Reds would be open. We want it to be open. However, all bars in the state of Connecticut are closed. Reds and senior pub nights are not the only thing on the seniors and their families' minds. Graduation is still a big question mark. Members of student government and Dr. Patillo all want the seniors to know they will be celebrated and recognized in some fashion. Can we have graduation or what form can we have graduation? Um, I saw one place uh, is having graduation. Um, college at a time but no spectators mm -hmm. well so family parents can't go etc so we, we don't know it's a it's a long distance between now and may i think we have to make different alternative plans so that we can pull the plug on either one uh should good fortune and and vaccinations etc uh, come into play i wish i had more information to give as the president to the class um unfortunately because May is a long time away. We don't really know what graduation is going to look like. And if anyone does know what graduation looks like, I certainly don't yet. Um, so I'm just as curious as you guys are in terms of finding out those things. And I'm really hoping that we can have some, some form of in-person graduation and graduation celebration. Of course, that's what I would love to see. And I know that's what the class would really love to see. And I hope that you know, the regulations and the guidelines and COVID numbers are where they have to be so that we can do that. Because after this year, I think the class deserves really a really great in-person graduation celebration. We have to follow the guidelines now so that hopefully later we can have that graduation that we do deserve. For The Pulse, 
This is Jackie O'Rourke, Fairfield, Connecticut. After this break, we'll tell you how the university has been working overtime to keep students busy and entertained during the pandemic. Welcome back to The Pulse. Let's take a deeper dive into what activities students can still participate in during the pandemic. With the spring semester in full swing, the Sacred Heart community is working together to keep students active and occupied during their free time with in-person and virtual events. Here is Mackenzie Carboni with the story. As the spring semester unfolds, Sacred Heart University students are back on campus for in-person classes. This has led to more activity on campus. Members of Student Union and the Student Events Team have been busy planning COVID safe activities for the SHU community to take part in. Nicholas Pazelli, the graduate assistant of Student Union, has been sending out public emails about what activities Student Union has to offer for undergraduates. Does Student Union provide undergraduate students? So being with the Student Union, we try our best to provide our undergrads with as many student environment friendly type of things possible, whether that's activities, things to offer, things to make their college life essentially even better than it already is and adding anything that they might be missing out on. Pazelli has been sending out daily emails for countless virtual activities that Student Union provides. We've been doing weekly trivias. Uh, my crew has been in charge of those, those have been a big hit. I know amongst other things, um, we do try to do pool tournaments down here. We do, uh, we're doing a scavenger hunt, we're doing virtual paint nights. Um, so they all, they're all, we try to offer different things. And as a total, there's been a lot of interest in all of them and we've had some great turnouts so far. Courtney Cardona, the vice president of SET, has also been active with scheduling and setting up events for undergraduate students to attend. These activities are being offered in person as well as on Zoom. I'm in charge of my own board, which is in charge of all the events that come to campus, like bingo, stuff a bear, and all the fun crafts and stuff. But I'm also vice president of SET for student government, which a lot of people don't know about. Um, so I do a lot of student government things, office hours, all the events we put on, and stuff like that. Cardona explains the necessary safety protocols. You know, the usual hand sanitizing, social distancing. We've been doing a lot of grab and goes, like sign ups, just to limit the kids who would come to these big events. Also just following the pioneer promise. Um, that's a part of student government. It's a part of being a student here at Sacred Heart with all the craziness going on. As a senior, Cardona believes it's never too late to get involved. I've always been a part of SET, even when I wasn't on the board. I always tell younger kids, I was like, go to the events. Like, you'll meet people. Like, it's not weird it's not uncool like even if you don't want the craft like your tuition's paying for it there are many ways to stay involved both in person and virtually depending on the students preferences watch your email for upcoming events by student union and set reporting for the pulse this is mackenzie carboni fairfield connecticut sophomores and upperclassmen moved into two new on-campus residence halls at the start of this semester these buildings represent a step closer to the completion of the upper quad Maisie Carvalho has a story. This spring, Sacred Heart opened two new residential halls, Mother Teresa of Calcutta Hall and Francis Xavier Cabrini Hall. These buildings are just a part of the years-long construction of the brand new, soon-to-be six-building upper quad. For the past two fall semesters, students assigned to the new buildings were temporarily housed in the Trumbull Marriott. Resident Hall Director Danielle Masha is well-versed in the transition to new buildings. This campus growth is incredible to see and to be a part of it and opening almost every single one of these residence halls, five of the six, has been nothing shy of rewarding. 
and not even for the sake of my own personal growth, for the sake of seeing how excited residents get to move into these beautiful new residence halls and going through a, such a unique process of living at the hotel and the memories that they're able to create once they actually get in here and the, their faces of, of awe when they see how incredible of a piece that the wait is worth. Masha shares the layout of these buildings and what students looking to live here next year can expect. These two buildings are very different from each other. So Francis Xavier Cabrini Hall is more apartment style. These apartments hold five people and it's two doubles and a single. The doubles are very large. They have a closet, a desk, the built-in storage unit above the desk, and a single, the same exact setup. The bathroom is also broken up into three different sections. You have a separate room with a double vanity, a mirror, and then a shower room with some more storage. There's a kitchen and living room combo setup, a beautiful island, a stove top, bunch of cabinets, a large refrigerator and freezer, and then off of that is the living room space and a TV stand for those who want to you know, complete their living room, make it really feel like a true apartment. Let me move over to Mother Teresa of Calcutta Hall. There's four people in these pods. In the pod spaces, it includes a bathroom with a shower inside of it. It has a walk-in closet that all four people share. Each double, they have a storage above the bed, standard twin size bed, two beautiful desks, and built-in hooks that students can use for extra storage. Two completely different residence halls, um, but combined together which is really cool as having the unifying bridge again. Director of Residential Life, Greg Madrid, has watched this project from the very beginning. I don't know, it's, it's just wild. Like seeing little pictures of the whole process go and like there used to be a huge green field and that's that's gone and now it's buildings and I don't know. So it's, it's really like kind of a wild thing to have seen so much growth and see so much change to our campus. What's really great about our two buildings here is just as the same as for Saudi Wazel, we have another iconic bridge. We just see that growth, especially from the bridge, is really beautiful to see. And students can continue to get excited to see what is happening and what has happened and really talk about how incredible it is to be a part of the Sacred Heart community. All six buildings of Upper Quad are set to be completed by fall of 2021. For The Pulse, this is Maisie Carvalho, Fairfield, Connecticut. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we will head over to the Pitt Center and see what's new with SHU Sports. The next four years will educate your mind, body, and spirit. We'll challenge you. We'll introduce you to yourself. They'll show you the world and expand your horizons. Redefine your notion of community and make your family a whole lot bigger. They'll push you to your limits and then show you that that was just your starting line. They'll teach you the meaning of service, that we are because of who we all are. These next four years are your time. Welcome to Sacred Heart. Welcome to your future. Welcome back. Let's take a look at one of the amazing athletes that we have here at Sacred Heart. Freshman Kenny Walmack is studying sports management here at the university. But as a two-sport athlete, it seems as if athletics is his second major. Here's Dan Gardella with more on the story. This winter, Sacred Heart fans can see Kenny Walmack on the hardwood as a part of the men's basketball team. Womack is a member of the men's basketball and football teams, something he dreamed of doing at a place he considers home. It just felt like home here. So I committed, um, I signed in February. And then at that point, I felt like I wanted to have the opportunity to play basketball too. High school coach reached out to Coach Latina. So then they talked and then I got involved and I talked to Coach Latina and I made him a, a little highlight tape of the season after, after the high school season, basketball season. Made him a little highlight tape and sent it to him and we chatted up and he gave him the opportunity to have a spot on the basketball roster. Now with the workload of a two-sport athlete, Womack has to find time to contribute to both teams. It was doing football workouts and then when I had the time to or if it was available for basketball, I would go right after football and make sure I bring all my stuff with me to, for basketball. So it was, it was it's definitely a grind. Throughout his recruitment process, Womack made it known to Sacred Heart that he had a desire to play both sports at the collegiate level. He expressed it on his visit here. You know, he had said that he was recruited to play basketball at other schools um, as well as football. And I told him that I would speak to the basketball coach. And if it meant sharing them, that's not a problem to me. I'd rather have that 
type of athlete or a tremendous athlete like that for at least part of the year, if not all the year. But if it's something that he wanted to do and the basketball coach, Coach Latina was on board, I was fully on board with it as well. I mean, you got a tremendous athlete that's able to play two division one sports. Why take that away from him by saying you could only play one sport and you have to choose? Womack says the biggest challenge in balancing two sports is the time management. But even in his free time, he finds ways to get better on his own. A lot of time management. I think that's the biggest. It's my free time, usually I tend to work out, do some small workout in here or I go to the gym, go lift or something. And so I'll be free around maybe eight. Womack joins an exclusive list of Sacred Heart players who have played two sports in their athletic careers. The most notable pioneer to do so was John Cordo, who played three seasons for the Buffalo Bills after his time in Fairfield as a member of the football and men's lacrosse team. On the field, who does Womack's game remind him of? I like to say Stefan Diggs. Great receiver, great receiver. He can do it all outside, inside. I feel like I can do it outside, inside. So. And he's a playmaker, and that's what I do. Diggs grew up in Gaithersburg, Maryland, just an hour north of Womack's hometown of Upper Marlboro. As Womack finally takes the field for the football team, he hopes his leadership will lead to individual success. Be a team guy first, and because I know within being a team guy, individual success comes. So I'm just ready to play, show what I can do, and yeah. Reporting for The Pulse, I'm Dan Gardella, Fairfield, Connecticut. The Sacred Heart Wrestling team has been competing over the past couple of weeks for the first time since March of 2020. On the story is Stefan Ayanian, who provides us a look at the team's performances and how they feel humbled to compete. The Pioneers had their last regular season match against Hofstra University. It was an intriguing matchup for both teams as they displayed an intense competitive performance. For seniors Sean Williams and Nick Ferrero, the opportunity for them to compete was humbling enough. It's a real blessing and I'm very thankful every single day I wake up because, you know, it could get taken away at any minute, especially because COVID is so hot right now and times are really tough for people. And I think that the fact that we're able to do this with an institution that takes really good care of us, it's, it's definitely a blessing and I'm very thankful every single day. Quite frankly, we're pretty blessed to be having a season because we very well could have gotten canceled. NCAA wrestling just canceled their division three championships last week. So I'm thankful that we did get to have a season. It was senior night for the pioneers and the coronavirus made the seniors walk on the mats and take their photos without any of their parents or relatives by their side and Williams and Farrell shared some sobering thoughts. Just so surprising because, you know, me and Nick Farrell were in the same grade. It's like, wow, we made it kind of thing, you know. But, you know, it's unfortunate you have, you can't do it with your friends and family. So that's a little bit of a sad part. And especially, not only with friends and family, we don't even have a crowd. I would have liked to, you know, have a full season and have my parents able to watch the match from the stands and then be able to attend my senior night and whatnot. But with the COVID restrictions, things are very different now. The wrestlers undergo constant testing of the virus each week in the restrooms at the Pitt Center to prevent the spread of cases from jeopardizing their season. And in between matches, they get checked up for cuts and are given hand sanitizer. We are getting tested three times a week right now. That is an NCAA uh, protocol. You must be getting tested three times and have three negative tests if you want to compete right now. With the season a couple of days from ending and the Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Championships coming up, the Pioneers look to qualify and enter someone in the national championship. Making sure everybody's on the same page with getting a national qualifier and getting somebody to place and, and wrestle into Sunday is the biggest goal for us. For The Pulse, I'm Stefan Ayanian, Fairfield, Connecticut. It's great to see shoe sports back in the swing of things after many obstacles due to COVID-19. When we come back, we're going to see the very first edition of a new segment here on The Pulse. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Let's see how three Sacred Heart alumni are forging their own path in the media world. On a first ever edition of Alumni Spotlight, Renee Viviano takes us behind the scenes of Downtime TV, a production company started and run by proud Sacred Heart alumni. As the pandemic hit, a group of recent SCM graduates are now working together at Downtime TV, a media production company that includes weekly podcasts with the goals to inspire, educate, and motivate. My name is Mike Theophil. I graduated Sacred Heart in 2019. I work at Downtime TV and I am the executive producer. My name is Anthony Materiello. I graduated undergrad from Sacred Heart in 2017, and I graduated the SCM graduate program in 2019. Currently, I'm a producer at Downtime Television. Um, my name is Gino Ganello. Uh, I graduated undergrad at Sacred Heart in 2017 and graduate program in 2019. Uh, I work at News 12 and here at Downtime, and uh, I'm basically talent for both those things. These three alumni credit their success and skills from the hands-on experience they had at Sacred Heart University. Sacred Heart was the best educational experience of my life. The first day, for example, we had orientation. Pap stands up. I didn't even expect him to be anything really crazy. And he, it turns out he's the executive producer of the Dan Patrick Show. He stands up and he says, everybody stand up right now. And everybody stood up and he goes, look around you right now. These are your coworkers for the next 40 years. The connections I made at SHU, especially in our field, connections are everything. Who you know is everything. But I think what people fail to realize, students at least, is that the best connections you could make are actually your fellow students. You know, we always talk about uh, doing stuff with, you know, professors always say, you know, look to your right, look to your left, you're going to see somebody um, who you're going to be working with. So it's like from that moment on, that was like a big motivator. And then on top of that, he always used to say, if you could create it on your own, do it. I think that downtime, at least for me personally, it's allowed me to be more myself. Obviously in the corporate news world, it's very, you gotta be kind of one person. It's hard to break out into that, you know, being yourself. And if you can do that, obviously that helps you a lot. But for me personally, I found it a lot easier to be myself here and do what I wanna I, do. And I knew that I wanted to make a radio show actually at first. It was, I looked at AJ Tanucci, a buddy of mine, we were in Providence, Rhode Island, and I was like, dude, I'm done with, with, with the group of friends I was with, the work I was doing, and I'm gonna go to SHU, and I'm gonna start this radio show with these new people that I'm gonna meet. I didn't even know anybody yet. Being able to do that and be, able to be, be a part of something like that is uh, something that you dream of and something I couldn't be happier to be a part of. Downtime, one word, energy. Live, energy. Live, 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 live. Being yourself. But I want to take downtime and the team we have here to basically levels we haven't gone to. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys continue to subscribe to the YouTube, follow the, uh, IG. the Instagram, yep. Twitter, Twitter, everything. We got to reporting from the Downtime TV studios in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I'm Renee Viviano. It's always great to see our SHU alumni finding success out in the real world, and even better when they do it together. You're right, Pat. Shoe takes care of Shoe. We're all in this together. Before we close the show, we wanted to wish the heartbeat of the pulse, Professor Al Castro, a happy birthday. Thank you for all you do for us. Happy birthday, Professor Al Castro. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm Mackenzie Carboni. And I'm Pat Kelleher. We'll see you next time right here on The Pulse. <laughs>